Hey everyone, welcome back to Carrots and Olives. My name is Brittany and today is a good day to talk about fountain pens. So lately I've been grouping my pens uh, in my head uh, into these different groups that I feel like my pens would fit into. And I felt like creating a video would be helpful for me just to have fun with my pens, but also for you and for those of you who've wanted to see my collection. Now my collection has grown to a point where it's quite difficult to share um, everything all in one video. It would just be really long and um, just a lot to prepare. So maybe by showing you the different groups I've put my pens into, you will begin to see the type, different type of pens that I have. And so to start off, I wanted to do this video on my most colorful fountain pens. In order for my fountain pens to meet this criteria, they have to have at least more than two colors and the colors have to be mixed in some fashion. This actually will remove a lot of my sailor pens that have like the two different colors, either on the finial or the barrel and some other pens I own that have two different colors, but those colors aren't mixed. They don't, they touch, but they're not like mixed together to form a really pretty swirl or something. So that is the criteria and I've come up with a few. Some of them are not inked and some of them are inked. So we will do writing samples of those. And then I will also share with you the uh, ink bottles that I have for them. Um, I realized that me personally, I do like to see the ink bottles uh, just so that, um, just because I don't know the names of all the inks I own. So, if I could see the bottle, then I would recognize it if I own it or not. Um, and that's just for those that who may have a large collection. So let's find the page and some of these you've seen, they're not all brand new pens. And, um, and then some of them I haven't inked up because I actually today I did, do a lot of cleaning um, this morning and I inked up a few pens that I haven't inked up in a very long time. Um, right now I'm trying to find the clip. Okay, so first off, I want to talk about the pens that are not inked up and they're in this Galen leather case, which is definitely getting darker and darker every day, but this case is so sturdy. I need to uh, personally consider getting another one just because of how easy it is, slim and slender it is to store and open up and use for fountain pens. So this is such a great option if you're considering um, different storage options for your pens. So to start off, the first pen that I did not ink up today is this. Um, I don't have the exact name, but this material is uh, what a lot of people at the time called like unicorn poop. And um, it falls somewhere in that, that naming. Um, but this is a pen from Birmingham Pen Company, and it is very simple. It does have a step up with the barrel to the cap. And it did have a, um, it has a Knox nib, but I think it had a silver or a rhodium plated nib, gold nib, on here before I switched it out. So this is just like a really pretty swirly teal and pink swirl pen, really comfortable to hold. It's not as girthy, there is a step down, although the threads do kind of protrude a little bit. They're okay and they don't get in the way very much, but definitely a pen I got probably back in 2019. Next is this pen, which is my only orange pen. We've talked about how I'm not a huge fan of the color orange, 
but um, I ended up getting one a long time ago. This is back in 2018, and this was one of like my only Edison Nouveau Premier edition from Goulet Pens. I kept wanting to think, uh, I kept wanting to say Galen Leather, but um, this nib actually had a two tone a two tone nib that I replaced with another fountain pen you'll see in a minute. So this is an Edison Nouveau Premier, and it's really comfortable. It's really lightweight, and I'm not quite sure if uh, they still come out with different editions every year. But this was the edition I was the first edition I was able to order and afford at the time. And so I was really excited to get this, although I'm not quite sure what I was thinking about getting the orange color. Next is my Aurora Kaleidoscopio. And this has a really pretty blue crackling of acrylic. And this is the, it has like the logo here, really subtle, engraved in the barrel. And I love this. This is my first and only Aurora. I love the ink window and the pen has grown on me. At first I felt like it was really scratchy are uh, very feedbacky is the proper way to say it. It was smooth, but there's a lot of feedback, even more so than with a Sailor fountain pen. But now that I've written with it longer, I really enjoy writing with it. And this one is numbered. So it's 567 out of 860. And there's still quite a few sellers that are selling this fountain pen. Okay, so now the rest of my pens are actually inked up. And I did ink up a few more pens for this video. Let's start with the newer inked pens. So this is newer inked, like I haven't inked them up in a, quite a while. This is the first fountain pen that I got some custom nib grinding work from Nibsmith Dan and it took forever to get it back. And <clears throat> I'm finding that with some Estrabook pens that they just, out of the box, they don't perform very well. And I come to that conclusion from other videos that I've seen where this is their first fountain pen or their first um, Estrabook and the pen just did not write well. So I sent my pen out to Dan, the Nibsmith, and he tuned it for me. And I would say that this pen is still pretty finicky. It needs a very wet ink, and sometimes it dries out, even after all the work and money I put into this pen, or at least to the nib. But I think I found a pretty good ink this time. This is the SD. And it's in the blueberry. SE. And it's a fine. I am using Waterman. I feel like Waterman is a bit underrated. They have some pretty colors and this blue has like hints of red in it. And it's called Serenity Blue. So right now it's behaving really well with this ink. And I think the thing I like the most is that it has that like push cap. You can kind of see it. 
and also because the material is very sturdy. Um, you could tell when you're taking the barrel off from the grip section that it's a thicker, kind of hefty -er material and it has some weight to it, so it's very substantial. And I guess the only thing that's holding me back is just the nibs for the ester brick pens. Okay, so my next one is this platinum. And I did get this one. I think this was the first pen I bought of 2022. I like to post this pen because the weight of the barrel itself is really light, but it feels really comfortable with the cap. And I have not had any issues with platinum fountain pens writing perfectly out of the box. Like of all my fountain pens that are platinum brand, they write so well. Even the inexpensive ones, the nibs are just perfect. Very reliable. All right, so this is a very thin nib. And this is the celluloid. Tortoise shell. I have this in a fine, but this is a Japanese fine, so it's super fine. And you see the little pretty heart. It is 14 karat gold. And the ink I'm using is Eidelstein. Smoky quartz. Whoa, what's going on? Okay, so one of the things I forgot to do is show the bottle of inks. So I think this is a pretty good match. This is the Smoky Quartz um, Pelican Auto Sign bottle and very sturdy, very nice uh, design and definitely a bottle that can be displayed at your desk. And then as for the Esther book, this was the bottle and I don't have the packaging for this one or the Eidelstein because the Eidelstein came in a um, a large box with a pen so it didn't come in its own little box and this one I got from Amazon and the box was all mushed up so I just keep these out in the, their actual bottles. So my next pen is this one an another Edison and you may be wondering well didn't you just sew the same pen earlier in a sense yes so side by side these are what they look like they're from two different brands so they use I'm assuming the same blank and it must have been from a different company I'm not quite certain but different pens different styles this one is an Edison Beaumont, and the other Edison I told you about is my Edison Nouveau, which is the one that has the pointed ends, and it's quite thin, very similar in size to, like, in barrel size with each other, and then this one's just a little bit longer, obviously. 
So one of the things about Edison pens is that they're quite light. So I do like to have the pens posted, especially the Beaumont because it's a shorter pen, similar in size to that of my Platinum. Now the nib on here is the nib I replaced with my Edison Nouveau Premier, which was this orange one. So this was the nib on the orange one, which matched really well. Um, however, the, uh, the original nib I ended up getting in a 1.1 stub and I prefer thinner, uh, finer nibs right now. So Edison Beaumont, and I'm just going to call it Unicorn Poop, but I am pretty confident that is not the name of this one, and this one is in the fine. Edison does stamp their nibs, so that's a feature of their nibs. And um, the ink I'm using is this one, and it's from Birmingham Pen Company, and it's called Supercell. This ink is pretty interesting just because it looks super blue inside the bottle, but it's actually like a turquoise, and it has really good shading. This nib also has some, a little bit of grip on the paper and it's not like too smooth. It's easy to control. These pens are really light and one of the things I noticed is that the grip section here is not for everyone. It's quite thin and that's just because it concaves in. So you could see a difference between this one and the platinum, how the platinum is straight, but this one kind of curves in, so it makes the grip section more narrow. So that may or may not be your jam. Next is this pen. It's been a while since you've seen this one. So this is very pretty. Very pretty Chateauians. It has green, purples, blues, pinks, some light gray and white. It's really smooth and soft. And it has this sterling silver little knob here to help it from uh, rolling. So they call it a roll stop. And even the threads are really smooth when un, um, threading it. It doesn't post. And the original nib on this pen was not working for me. So I switched it with a Franklin Kristoff. So this is like the house for a Joe nib. And Frank and Kristoff, they can grind their nibs for you into many different options. And you can just buy nibs separately with the housing. So all you gotta do is just replace the nib, which is really nice. So you can get a nib in every single size and replace it into this housing unit and other housing units. So this is Hardy. Pen writes. And 
and I found them on Instagram, but also from Gourmet Pens. She's a huge fan of theirs. Um, so this is English Garden. And my nib is a medium, but it's an italic and it's quite crisp. I'm just gonna put MI. And again, it's from Franklin Christoph and Franklin Christoph stamps theirs nibs as well. And then the ink I'm using is actually this one, this bottle, it's kind of lopsided as it sits flat at an angle. But I found that the angle is really helpful so that you can put your pen in at this diagonal and ink it up. So this is a Kakimori. Hotari pigment ink. And it's Coton or 10 Coton. Coton 10 is the color. So it's just this black. And it's pigment, so it is water resistible as long as it's dried. So the thing about a cursive italic, I'm not quite sure if this is cursive italic because cursive italic shouldn't have such sharp edges to where it feels like it's gonna tear the paper. Whereas um, an italic grind has more of a squared off edge. Cursive Vitalic should have a little bit of give, so it should be curled a little bit on the edges of the nib to allow for, um, you know, cursive writing. So I think this one's a little sharp. I think I don't think it's a cursive Vitalic, unless Franklin Christoph just creates their cursive italics that way. So my next pen, you've seen multiple times. And we are going to switch. You've seen this many times, but this barrel still is just so soft. It's so smooth and it's almost seamless. You can feel where the barrel hits, but it's such a nice writer out of the box and um, it's just a yo-o nib, fine. And the barrel, although it does kind of concave in, it's really comfortable to write with because it's a little bit thicker. So I really like this design and I found this company on Instagram and they don't always have a lot of pens on their website at once, but if you follow them on their Instagram page, uh, they post quite often and then they'll say, oh, it's in the shop. And then you can snag one. And that's how I got this one. So this is on a whim. Woodworks. Pretty cool name. And this is white. Avalone. or abalone, 
I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Um, and then I have it in a fine nib and the ink I'm using is Waterman again. And it's the Inspired Blue. Now I've heard that the name has changed multiple times. So I got mine on Amazon. And if the box comes in good condition, it looks like this, quite basic. And then you just have the ink. So this is Anka Blue Inspiration. And yeah, really pretty light, light blue has great shading. Okay, so next is this gorgeous pen and it has a blind cap, which is just access to the uh, converter. And you can fill the pen without opening up the barrel. However, I learned from a subscriber or, if, or someone who watches my videos and always comments, which I'm so grateful for, that uh, I believe it's a man and he said that he would, he would ink up his pen using the blind cap all the time and discovered that the thread stopped threading. So I don't know if he just kind of pops the material in on or if he just has to leave it off now but by using this and unthreading and threading all the time it pretty much ruined the threads on the end now and I want to say that could possibly just be because of the constant wear and tear um, and also because maybe the material towards the end of the barrel isn't as strong as the material in the middle and I could be completely wrong but he suggested not to use a blind cap very often if you can help it and just um, and just ink it up normally how you would with any other pen. So this has a very interesting ink and we've talked about this in my last video. Also this pen writes fantastic out of the box. My last Leonardo wrote the same way, really good. Didn't need any adjustments. And it has the branding on the nib, which is like some wings. And this Leonardo is an Italian brand. So this is the Leonardo Ferrore. So this pen is very comfortable. It has some weight to it because of the converter inside that has like a metal piece. So it's more substantial and it's so pretty. I'm really happy I got it. It has Leonardo written on there and then 498. And I'm not sure if these are a limited number. But um, it kind of goes into the family of my turquoise and pinks and kind of blends in with the Esther book a little bit. And then, oh, okay. I love it. The Aurora kind of, you kind of see a theme going. Now the ink is in a 30 ml bottle, which seems really tiny. I don't know why, it, it may just be an optical illusion, <laughs> but these bottles are really cute and they're supposed to contain 30 mLs. And this does not look like 30 mLs to me, but I'm pretty sure it is. It just doesn't look like it. 
but I do like how sharp looking their bottles are. And the packaging is actually pretty sturdy and clean. So definitely we'll keep it in the box. Okay, so we've talked about this pen a few times in my videos now, and this is the one that glows in the dark. Pretty cool. I still haven't used the ink. I think this is probably the third video in a row I've talked about this pen, or at least mentioned it in some form or fashion. Really juicy. This ink is just perfect for this pen. So this is the Briolette. And they have different models. Um, this one does not post. And I think they have models that do. This color is luminous. Lagoon. And the ink is Ferris Will Press. Mirror. Mirror. Of Moraine. Can I fit it? Almost. And this is actually a medium nib. It's a Schmidt nib. And it's kind of hard to see all the details on it. It's quite a small nib. It's a number five, I believe. But it writes really well. And the initial nib I had in here was an extra fine, but I switched it out and put it into another pen. And I switched it out for the other medium. So. Now it writes really good. And actually, let's do some loop de loops. The bottle comes in this very lovely, well made design of Ferris Will Press and that's the back side, and then here's the front. These are really pretty bottles, and they should be on display, in my opinion, but I keep them in the boxes because the boxes are so lovely. Okay, we've already reached the last pen, which I've talked about also in quite a few videos, but this is the Scribo. I really love this barrel. This pen is so comfortable, and I probably hardly talked about the finial, but it has like a, a feather, which is, I guess, an international symbol for writing. And I've mentioned the only coral I have with this pen. is the um, the low angle. And for me, that just means I can't switch up the angle like the way that I write. And I'm not sure, I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one, but sometimes I write like this, Sometimes I write like this, sometimes I write like this. Um, I change my grip. So this is the Altrove color. And my pen is in an extra fine. The ink I'm using is also Scribo, which I've talked about many times. And even with this extra fine, you could see the shift in color. 
This is the Verde Mediterraneo. And you can see the shift in the color. All right, and as for the bottle, it comes in this box. And it's a big box. It's almost like a, a cup can fit in here. But it's a nice box. It's very sturdy. And it comes with this leather little loop, pull loop that you can use. And it has an engraving of a feather. It says Scribo, feel the writing. And you can pop the top off this way or even put it in this way and to pull it out. And it comes nestled just like this. And it's a really big bottle. So, just in comparison, 90 mLs. And it has this space in here that allows for you to stack them which is a nice feature. So they're meant to be displayed, but because it has a box, I keep it in the box. All right, so let's show you all the pens side by side. So that you can see how they look, how colorful they are. And I guess this probably would have been a good um, example of me needing to get like the 20 pen case so that you could just see them all together, but that's okay. So let me show you. How they look. switch these over so the biggest one is actually the Edison Nouveau and all my flat tops let's see They're roughly around the same size, so there's a few big and then a few a little bit smaller. I do find all of them very comfortable to write with. I would say my Piuma is most comfortable next to this one on a whim, and then my Platinum. It's very comfortable. All right, well, thank you for joining me and spending time with me. This lovely day. I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye!